I'm excited today because today I'm going to teach you a model for electric current, okay? And uh, the way we do this um, is we try to build up a model as much as possible without saying the word voltage. Just of current, just of the flow. And then on Monday, we're going to build up a second model that is built on the idea of voltage. And then we'll use both of those models to solve problems. I'm going to be flying through ideas today, but this is your chance to understand electric circuits, to look at a circuit and say, whoa, that's obvious what's going on. So I beg of you, I plead with you, try to focus, try to stay on the bus, try to keep with me. Now, the reason that we teach two models, one for current and one for voltage, is we find that beginning students often confuse those two ideas. They can't separate out the voltage from the current. The voltage is the push, it's the oomph, it's the, it's the thing that drives the current around the circuit. The current is the flow, the actual movement of charge through the wires, okay? Now, it's not surprising that we get these two confused. David Letterman doesn't know the difference, okay? I was watching the Letterman show years ago on Halloween. He was trying to blow up a, a half-done pumpkin. That's why I was watching. It didn't happen. The next night I watched, and I heard something that just froze me to the bone. And so I actually paid money for the transcript. This came right from the transcript. We we're going to try again tonight to explode a half-ton pumpkin. We wanted to do it last night, but the heavy rains put a kibosh to it. It seems the pumpkin had electricity running through it. Here's how. Along the sidewalks of New York City is a metal edge. For some reason, five volts of current run through the metal edge on the sidewalk of 53rd Street. Wrong or sick and wrong? Sick and wrong. And this is the person that teaches us every night. I mean, where are we going to learn truth? Okay. So, we are going to separate those two. We're going to develop an, uh, a model for current today and, and Friday. Monday, we'll move on to voltage. Let's just remind ourselves, you know the answer to this. An ammeter is always, always always inserted in series. A voltmeter is always, always, always uh, added in parallel. So tell me, which has more resistance, the ammeter or the voltmeter? You know the answer. Make me proud. Answer is B. An ammeter acts like a wire. It has negligible <laughs> resistance. A voltmeter has almost infinite resistance. Okay. We're going to quickly <laughs> review what you did in tutorial. The first experiment we're going to do is we're going to hook up this bulb to a battery. And we're going to hook a couple of things in series with the battery and the bulb. This right here is just an old-fashioned dimmer switch. We call it a rheostat. And then the current goes through the ammeter to measure the flow, and then goes through the bulb. Now, as I move the slider on the rheostat, you see two things happen. The bulb got brighter, and what happened to the reading in the ammeter, on the ammeter? Uh, watch again. Okay, it starts out dim. As the bulb gets brighter, what's happening to the current? Yeah, you don't know because you can't see because I'm right in front of you, right? Okay, for these seats over here. As the bulb gets brighter, the reading on the ammeter gets bigger. Now that's what we built the entire model on in tutorial. If it's the flow of something, we don't know what it is, we can't see it, could be blueberry juice, could be electron. If the flow of that something causes the bulb to be bright, 
And if, when there's no flow, it's dark. It makes sense that if we have more flow, the bulb ought to be brighter. Or I say more flow, more glow. More flow, more glow. And that's what we're seeing here. The bigger the current, the brighter the bulb. And vice versa. Okay? Now, I'm not going to need this for a while. Okay. Now, the next experiment we're going to do is we're going to start with a single bulb, and as you know, that single bulb will be very bright. And then we're going to compare that to two bulbs in series. So, Here's the single bulb. You'd say that's bright. And I represent the brightness by very dark yellow rays coming out from that bulb. Now if I replace that with two bulbs in series, they're dim and they're equally dim. They're the same dimness. And I represent that with a yellow that's not so dark. Now if we believe more flow, more glow, we would say there's lots of flow there in that bright bulb, and there's less flow in these bulbs that are dimmer. Now, in this circuit here, we've learned what goes around comes around. And so that means that the the current that's flowing through the battery is the same as the current flowing through this bulb. If I call that five, you want to say amps, I want to say quarts of blueberry juice per second. Either way, five, that's got to be five. Now, the $64,000 question is this. What's the current through this battery? Is it going to be that, or is it going to be that plus that? Talk to your neighbor. Which is it going to be? Is it going to be that through the battery or that plus that? Talk to your neighbor. That was a bit much. That was a bunch of... I saw your friend just walk in. Sad. The girl who yeah, was she was she was okay, if I show of hands, how many think that this is the current through the battery? How many think it's this plus this? Okay. Now. We didn't agree, but I bet we'll all agree that those two bulbs are sharing the current through the battery. Do we agree on that? Everyone nod your head. Yes. Unfortunately, that word share has two meanings. I can share something like I share a book. I read the book, then I give it to you, you read the book, you take it back to the library. I can also share like I share a pie. I take half the pie, you take half the pie. Which way are these two bulbs sharing the current through the battery? Like a book or like a pie? Shout it out. Book. Pie. <laughs> pie. Pie. <laughs> Folks, we still have that principle that you learned with the nichrome wire in tutorial. And that is what goes around comes around. If I put an ammeter here, here, and here, all three of those ammeters have exactly the same reading, and that reading would be just the current through that bolt there. Now, folks, these don't just have the same size current it's the same current. If you take that electron, paint him green and call him Fred, he's got to go through this bulb, and then he's got to go through that bulb to get back to the battery. When you take Fred and all of his friends, they go through this, then they go through that. It's not just the same size current, it's the same guys. It's the same flow. And it's smaller, because the resistance in that circuit is larger. 
You remember when we took the two straws and put them end to end, it was harder to blow air through? When we add resistors in series, we increase the resistance. That's what's happening here. And if we use V equals IR, the battery voltage stays the same. As the resistance gets bigger through the circuit, of the circuit, the current gets smaller through the battery. Okay? We just use Ohm's law in a global sense. You remember, Ohm's law is V equals IR, by which we mean delta V equals IR. And when we use it globally, this is the battery voltage, this is the current through the battery, and this is the equivalent resistance of the circuit as a whole. When we add those two bulbs in series, we increase the resistance. Now, we're going to do a lot of activities today where we, uh, we put things into these black boxes A and B. They each contain a resistance that, uh, that right now is unknown. But we can see how brightly these bulbs are lit. And we see that the one on the right is brighter than the one on the left. Now I call those indicator bulbs because they're my eye into the battery. I can't see the flow of current through the battery, but I know that all of it goes through that bulb. When that bulb is bright, there's lots of current through the battery. So if I were to tell you that one of those boxes uh, First of all, which one com contains the greater resistance? A. A. Okay. So my question is, this box on the left, is that box A or box B? B. That's B. Okay. And your reasoning is as follows. A has a bigger resistance. The box on the right <coughs> has a bigger resistance. So the box on the right is A. That leaves the box on the left to be B. Okay. Now, we're tempted to say the bigger the R, the smaller the current. And for these simple circuits, we'd get away with it. However, if this is what you learn, if this is your takeaway from this lecture, you will have serious troubles on the next midterm. I need you to finish your sentences. I want you to say the bigger the R, finish your sentence, of the circuit as a whole. The smaller the current, finish your sentence, through the battery. Okay? That's what's being played off of each other. If the battery voltage is constant, when one of these gets bigger, the other one has to get smaller, and vice versa. But it's the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit and the current through the battery. Okay? If you're not careful with your language, you'll get tripped up. Let's go to experiment three. In this experiment, we, we start with the single bulb again. And it's bright. And then, we replace that with two bulbs in parallel, and we find they're both bright. Now indeed, we didn't need both of these circuit boards, I could just open this switch. We saw this last day, right? Um, when I close that switch, it doesn't affect this bulb at all. And this bulb becomes just as bright as that bulb. Okay, so what we saw, is the two bulbs in parallel were just as bright as a single bulb. What, uh, more flow, more glow means that if that's five, you call it amps, I call it quartz of blueberry juice per second, this has to be five and that has to be five. What goes around comes around, so if this is five, that's got to be five. What have I got here? Ten. Ten. It's got to be and I can see that by looking at this junction right there. If I blow that up, I see that every second that goes by, I've got to deliver five quarts of blueberry juice this way and five quarts of blueberry juice that way. 
That means I gotta bring in every second 10 quarts of blueberry juice. Now in this case, am I sharing like a book or sharing like a pie? pie. Like a pie. Now I'm sharing like a pie. I'm actually dividing it. If I think of Fred and his friends coming, they see two paths that look the same. There's no reason to choose one over the other. Half of them go one way, half of them go the other way. But the number coming in has to be equal to the sum. Now, in this case, I have exactly twice the current through this battery that I have through there. Why? <coughs> Ohm's law. If this has resistance R, two identical paths have half the resistance of a single path if they're parallel. Right? That's what we learned last day. So that means that this resistance is going to be half of that resistance. If I use V equals IR, if the resistance gets smaller by half, the current has to double. Check that your neighbor's on the bus. If not, slap them away. Okay? Let's look at this problem that you voted off the island. You have a 12 volt battery hooked up to some resistor and you get 2 amps through the battery. And that tells me what size resistance this is. This has to be 6 ohms because V equals IR. The question says you can only add one resistor to this circuit, one resistor. And you want to change the current through the battery from 2 to 8 amps. Now if I want to increase the current through that battery, do I want to add something in series or in parallel? Parallel. parallel. Okay, so if I add that in parallel, and if 2 amps is going this way, but I want 8 amps going through the battery, how many amps have to go down this path? 6. Six. Now if I've got 3 times as much current going this way as that way, this path must be 3 times easier, so this is going to be 2 ohms. 2 ohms. Okay. Now, we're going to play our game again. This time with your clickers. Get your clicker out. Okay, with your clicker, the box on the left here is that going to be A or B, or no idea? <coughs> Get this done quickly, we're going to do a lot of them. Okay, last call. Good, that's box A. Now, here's a summary. If I ask what happens to the current through the battery, if I add something in series, if I take a bulb or a network of bulbs uh, or anything, and I insert that between A and B, if I separate that line, I break that line, and I shove the new stuff in, in every single case, the current through the battery goes down. And the reasoning is threefold. I have clogged up an existing path. That's going to increase the, cur the resistance, finish your sentence, of the circuit. And that, we know, decreases the current, finish your sentence, through the battery. Now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we add. It can be a bulb, it can be a network of bulbs, it can be a smelly dead fish. Anything you add in series is going to increase the resistance. You remember that we found the equivalent resistance for series by 
by just adding them up. So anytime I add something in series, I'm making the sum bigger. Okay? Now, if you add something in series, you have to use scissors. You have to break an existing line and shove the new stuff in. Okay, so I would have to break the line right here. A and B are going to go dark. I pull those apart and I shove the new stuff in and solder them in. Now, on the other hand, anytime I add something in parallel, the current through the battery goes up. Again, the reasoning is threefold. I have added a new path, a new opportunity for flow. It doesn't have to be a good path, it just has to be a new path. In doing that, I lower the resistance, finish your sentence, of the circuit. That increases the current, finish your sentence, through the battery. Again, it doesn't matter what you add. It could be a bad path. It's just got to be a new path. And you don't have to use scissors to add something in parallel. When I added this bulb in parallel here, I could just clip it on with alligator clips here and here. I'm not going to make A or B go out. I'm just going to clip them on. It might change the brightness of A and B, but it won't cut off the current through them. Okay, check that your neighbor's on the bus. Okay, folks, it's going to seem like there's lots of different ways to change a circuit, but I assure you there are only four. There are 50 ways to leave a lever, but there's just four ways to change a circuit. The first way is to clutter an existing path. Now, that's going to increase the resistance of the circuit. Another way is to add a new path. Again, it doesn't have to be a good path, just a new path. That's going to lower the resistance of the circuit. Well, that's two of the four ways. And I bet you can think of the other two ways. If cluttering an existing path is going to raise the resistance, then decluttering a path is going to lower resistance of the circuit. Likewise, if adding a new path is going to lower resistance, removing a path, doing the opposite, that is going to increase resistance of the circuit. Those are the four ways that you can change a circuit. Okay, <clears throat> on the next exam, the principal skill that you will need more than any other is to be able to look at two circuits or two branches in the same circuit and be able to say which one has more resistance. Without that skill, it's like not knowing how to draw a three body diagram in 205, okay? This is the skill to have. So if I were to ask you which circuit has more resistance, A or B, could you do it? Yes. Wait a minute. Let's up the ante. <coughs> now could you do it? Yes. Okay. If during the exam you take off your socks, I win. What does that mean? 
many of you develop a very complicated way of figuring out which has more resistance. You say, oh, bulbs are bad, bulbs are resistant. So you count up the bulbs and you keep the number of bulbs on B on this hand and the number of bulbs on A on this hand. And then you say, oh, the paths are good, paths are good. And so you count up the paths, but you've used your fingers, so you take off your socks and you count the, the bulbs on your toes. If you do that, I guarantee you I will have set up the exam so you will get the wrong answer. Okay? Not even by coincidence will you get the right answer. Here's how you do it. You bring a red pen. You draw a circle around the new stuff. What did I have to add to this to turn it into that? All of that stuff in the circle. And here's the key. You don't care what's in the circle. It can have lots of paths. It can have lots of bulbs. It can have fish. <coughs> Doesn't matter. All you have to answer is, how did I add it? Did I add it with scissors in series? Or did I clip it on with alligator clips in parallel? What did I do here? Series or parallel? Parallel. 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 And so that means I lowered the resistance. It's an ugly path, got a lot of bulbs. But it's a new path, OK? If I look at Fred, Fred can go through one bulb. Fred can still go through one bulb back to the battery. Or Fred can go through this other door. New opportunity, easier flow. Let's play the game. Which is this bulb on the, or which is this box on the left? Is it A or B with your clicker? Okay. Good, it is A. And again, the way you do it is you circle the new stuff and you ask how was it added. It was added in parallel, and so that's the lower resistance. What about this one here? This box on the left, is it A or B? stuff. And here's the part that people have trouble with. How did we add that? We added it in series. Now, what's in the circle is a parallel network. But that's not important. It never matters what's in the circle. It's how we add what's in the circle. If I wanted to add that, I would take the single bowl, I would then break the line, and then I would, in that broken spot, add the new part. Okay? Now, if I look at this circuit here, Fred goes through a single bulb, he's done. Fred goes through a single bulb, he's not done. He's got to go through this network. It might be an easy network to get through. I mean, there might even be... 27 pounds, but it's still something extra. And so that means it's going to increase resistance. So this is going to be A on the right, B on the left. Some of you got that wrong. What about this one? This one you should all get right. This box over here is A or B. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, the answer is B. Again, I circle the new stuff, that's this bulb right here, and it's added in series. I had to break this line and shove it in, and so that is increasing the resistance. A's on the right, B's on the left. One more time with your clicker. Which circuit has more resistance, A or B? This is the last one we'll do like this with the clicker. Wouldn't it be better if we had some sort of high voltage device that kind of zapped you when you got the wrong answer? <laughs> that, I'm going to put in a grant proposal here, see if we can get these seats wired. Okay. Last call? Whoa, we don't know. We don't know. Okay, folks, let's follow the rule. The rule says we first of all figure out what we have to add to turn one into the other. B is the simplest one. If I drew A like B, it would look like this. It would just be upside down. If those were my two circuits, they would have exactly the same resistance. So the question is, what's missing on B? Well, it's that part there. And the question is, how are those bulbs added? Are they added in series or in parallel? Series. They are series, but they're added in parallel. Indeed, I could add those bulbs like this, and that would be exactly the same circuit as B. All I did is I clipped those bulbs. I can't find my meter stick. But I clipped it in right there and right there. OK? If I look here, Fred's got to go through a single bulb and then either one of these paths. Here, Fred has to go through a single bulb or either one of those paths. Or this becomes a new opportunity for flow that didn't exist in the other option. In, I was calling that B, but that's A. So that means there's more resistance on the right. OK. Check that your neighbor's on the bus with that. That's a terrible place to leave the bus. When you use the current model to rank bulbs, it is often very useful to be the river, to watch the current leave one side of the battery and just watch it as it goes around to the other side of the battery. And it doesn't care, it doesn't matter which way you go, from positive to negative or negative to positive. And every time you get to a branching point, ask yourself, does the river branch 50-50 here or some other way? If I were ranking these bulbs, I would rank A as the brightest and B equal to C as the dimmest. Why? Because all the current that goes through the battery goes through A. And then that river comes here and sees two branches that look the same, that are identical. And so the current has no reason to choose one over the other it splits 50-50, okay? Now, what about these two circuits? How would you compare bulb A in brightness to bulb F in brightness? Equal. They're the same. Remember we found we could turn the battery upside down and it didn't change anything? We don't know which way the current actually flows. There's one experiment that suggests that electrons are flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal we don't do that experiment, so we'll never find out. 
we pretend that it's positive charge going the other way from positive terminal to the negative terminal. It gets rid of all sorts of minus signs. So in that case, A is equal to F, B, C, D, and E are all the same. Now, this is critical. Which is brighter, C or D? Explain to your neighbor, which is brightest, C or D? Can you not in this box you just found? Yeah. That's why I need to sit in the front row. Okay. Yeah, further right in the middle where you can see everything. Yeah. If we look at the river, all of the current goes through A, it's the brightest bulb. And then when the current gets here, it sees two paths. They split and come back together here. This path is hard, this path is easy. We find the current favors the path of least resistance. I'm going to have more than half go the easy way, less than half go the hard way. Okay? How does it, so yeah, so does it kind of like, you can peek around the corner and see? It can. Yeah. Now, one second. I tried, I tried not to use the word voltage, but it hinges on this idea of voltage. If I take two straws, one fat and one skinny, and I blow through them, I'm putting the same push on both, but the fat one gets a huge flow through it, and the small one gets a, a little trickle through it. How does it know? Well, you push the same on both. One's just harder to get through. Here, voltage from here to here is the same as voltage from there to there. The push, you can think of voltage as a pressure difference. I'm pushing charge the same amount on both. One's hard to get through, so the result is a trickle. One's easy to get through, so the result is a gusher. So if C was a break in the line? If there was a break here, then nothing would go that way, and all of it would so go the other way. B would not light up at all. B would be dark. Because it knows I can't go that way. Okay? Now, because there's more resistance, in that left branch, it will get less current. Now, the ranking would be A is the brightest, D is second brightest, and B is equal to C. Can you justify this in one word or less? B is equal to C? One word or less? Series. Series, that's the word. Okay, now if I look at that circuit there, and I B the river, I can rank these bulbs. Well, let me let you do it first. Which is the brightest bulb? Which is the second brightest bulb? Be the river. between the path through A and the path through B. Does it split 50-50 or some other way? 50-50, the two paths look identical. The whole river comes back together exactly the same amount of current that went through the battery. What goes around comes around. And then it chooses again. Does it split 50-50 or some other way? Some other way. More than half goes through E, less than half goes through the path with C and D and then it all comes back together and goes around. So the ranking would be E is the brightest, A and B are tied for second, C and D are tied for last. Okay? And that's the way you would solve that on an exam. 
you would say E gets greater than half of the current through the battery. A and B each get half. C and D each get less than half. Okay? Now, here's something that we need for our homework. If I have two bulbs in series and I provide a path with nothing but wire from one side of the bulb to the other side of the bulb B by closing that switch, what's going to happen to bulb B and what's going to happen to bulb A? Tell your neighbor real quick. Just a wire. He's going to do. B's going to basically go out to the around. Yeah. Reduce the overall resistance in the circuit so A is going to get better. Okay. Let's see if you're right. Okay. Yep. B goes out and A gets brighter. Now. We always say current favors the path of least resistance rather than chooses. There's one exception. When one of the paths is a perfect wire with zero resistance, all of the current is going to go through the wire. None of it's going to go through the other path. Now, if you, if you buy cheap wires, if you decide to save money and get some really crummy wires, then you're going to get most of the current through the wire and there's still going to be a trickle through the other path. But we're going to always assume perfect wires uh, and in truth, the wires that we use are pretty close to perfect and you get pretty much all of the current going through the wire. Now why did A get brighter? Same current. What's that? Same current flowing through. The same current flowing through it as before? No, because it's <laughs> What's that? I reduced the resistance of the circuit by adding a new path. It was a really good path. By adding a path in parallel, I lowered the resistance of the circuit, the current through the battery went up, and all the current through the battery goes through A. A is an indicator. Okay? Now, in the tutorial on the last page, you found that there were some problems that could not be solved with this qualitative model for current. Okay? Here's an example. In this simple circuit with the switch closed, A is the brightest and B and C are equal. They each get half of the current through the battery. A gets all of it. Now the question is, if I open that switch, I know that A and B are now in series. C will be out. Is C sorted out? C is on an incomplete path. That's not the same as sorting out. Well, that just sounds like a technicality, Greg. One of them will burn your house down, the other will not. That's important. If you have a short, you're going to have huge amounts of current in your wall. It's going to create a fire. You're going to have to rebuild. If you have a break in the line, the bulb goes out. You read in the dark. There's a difference. Okay? So, if you say that this bulb is then shorted out, you will lose point on the exam. That's probably more important to you if you don't own a house. Okay? <laughs> now, the question is, what happens to bulb B? Well, I know that by removing a path, the resistance of the circuit goes up. That means the current through the battery goes down. That means whereas A had a lot of current going through it and B got 50%, now A is going to have less current going through it and B will get all of it. So what happens to B? It gets 100%. It used to get 50%. Okay? But our model does not tell us how much the current through A decreases. If it decreases this much, B gets brighter. 
if it decreases a whole lot, V gets dimmer. Our model is a qualitative one. It's like being hungry, and I ask you to choose. Would you rather have half of a large pizza or all of a small pizza? You don't know if you don't know how much smaller the small pizza is. There are two changes going on at once. One trying to make gold be brighter, one trying to make it dimmer. I've got one more minute you're paying for. It's like I come to, uh, I come to Tori and Valerie and I, to my kids, and I say, uh, Tori, good day. Valerie got in trouble again. She is out of the will. She is out of the will. I, I disowned her. You get it all. You inherit everything. Oh, but the stock market crashed today. So is Corey better off or worse off today? She doesn't have to share, share with her sister, but the amount that's being shared went down. If we don't know how much it went down, we can't say. Now, this seems to be a good place to end since you've already left. So. <laughs>